Welcome back to Speed Demon Painting, where today we are taking a look at the Alliance Order of Battle, or Orbat for short. Today is a bit different because it's more of a theory crafting experience, as uh, these are not yet released by uh, War Cradle Studios, and nobody in our gaming group actually has these uh, old school dystopian wars models from Spartan games, so this one's very much theory crafting and uh, sort of, yeah, my first look at, uh, at looking at these units, whether I find them interesting or not on paper. So that's just a small little uh, word of caution before we start. The first thing that we do when we're taking a look at the Orbat is checking out the different uh, special rules that the army has access to, the fleet has access to, and uh, there's not that many in the Alliance uh, so far. Uh, the first off is coordinated uh, support. If you've got some models uh, with this rule, they can add plus two to its aerial and submerged defenses if they are within 10 inch of one or more friendly units with the flagship trait. Um, this already leads me to believe that if you have this uh, this force, you do want to have more than one flagship to spread that buff around. Getting plus two on these defenses is a fairly big deal because that usually is something you associate with full cruiser squadrons and uh, these might just be able to get it on their own, stacking with the defense buffs from uh, other friendly units. So they might be able to get very good and high defense values, and that's already a good point. Um, luckily, as we'll discover later down the line, if you're the opponent of uh, of these French and Italian forces, they they are not exactly that staggering in terms of defenses compared to the other forces. Another thing that they have is getting their defenses in a different way than just traditional armor is through de defensive pilots. Now, friendly SRS tokens launched by this unit provide plus two action dice to defending the Citadel dice pool of friendly units. Now, just a reminder, the defending the Citadel dice pool is the one that you get when you are being assaulted in a fray or an, uh, an assault action in that step. Normally you can sacrifice an SRS token to uh, provide you with plus one defense. It's not really the most attractive option, but if you're getting plus two dice, you could be preventing a potentially devastating assault from uh, from an enemy force uh, through your uh, SRS token. So it's something to remember and that can help uh, as well. Heavy magazines is nothing new. You get the lead attack with a heavy gun battery, a normal gun battery, heavy rocket battery and rocket batteries. This limitation, however, is a bit odd as we'll soon discover that these uh, French and Italian ships are often not making use of uh, gun batteries, but are often using heat lances and heat lancets. And these are sadly excluded with the rules for heavy magazines. So it'll be interesting to see how that pans out. And then the next thing is reinforced waterline, attacks with a uh, submerged quality, that is usually torpedoes, uh, but it can also be things like, uh, for instance, the killer whale squadrons from the Enlightened. They're going to have a very tough time against these ships with reinforced waterline, because they only gain a single hit uh, from each heavy hit rather than the usual two for attacking this model. Exploding hits are unaffected by this rule, so you still get those as you'd expect, but that's essentially shrouded rule in another way, but they can't call it shrouded rule because torpedoes ignore that rule, so this reinforced waterline makes sure that they can actually defend against submerged attacks in a very meaningful way. Next up, we're having a look at the different battle fleets available to them. Now, there are not a lot of generic special rules which are mentioned here. As a quick reminder, if you select a battle fleet, this is a one of the rules you can commonly find in them. They are listed here. Quite a few factions have more than one thing here. Uh, so far, this isn't very fleshed out yet uh, for the French, and it just has the standard command reroll, which is your bad luck protection in this case. That doesn't worry me too much though, because as I scroll up a bit to avoid the, the sticker in the top end of the uh, corner, this is an order of battle that isn't even a version 1 yet. It's a 0.05a, so it's a very early draft probably. But, you know, War Cradle being War Cradle, they just bring it out there and have people uh, play with it, and so you can send feedback. So, yeah, I urge everyone, if you're able to, do so, because it only leads to a better game and 
do have the feeling that the feedback is being listened to. An Alliance battle fleet is a standard one. You get an Alliance and flagship as a, as a must take and up to four of the following a unit with the Alliance trait. You can also see just from the layout of this uh, battle fleet that this is a very early edition uh, or bat compared to the other ones. The mercenary battle fleets are nothing new. We've discussed those in the other Orbats, so you can take the usual suspects here as well for the French. When we're continuing down to the Alliance outfitting yards, this is usually when you find uh, special equipment unique to the French uh, and uh, Italian forces. Um, there's not a lot here in terms of generators. Uh, these are all the generators that you expect to see in a force, so we are skipping ahead to the special one. And the special one for uh, these forces is the Solex generator. Now, a model with this generator adds plus one to its speed attribute, which is already pretty great to start off with. And in addition to this, this generator gives the sustained quality, which is a big deal, sustain is a really good quality, to any heat lance or heat lance set weapons used by this model or any friendly models within 5 inch of this uh, model. So you can actually have them as little bubbles where you can fire these uh, big shots out of. Now I said this was one that had me slightly perplexed looking at this Orbat when I was going over it because, well, flagships are now very much buffed because you have the uh, the heavy magazine rule but that one's limited to rocket batteries and, uh, and, and, and traditional gun batteries and these Solex generators are the ones buffing your heat lance or heat lance set weapons so I think in a future update um, I think you would want to see lots of flagships with heat lance weapons and heat lance class weapons with these generators but I'm afraid heavy magazines is just such a good rule that it's gonna trump the Solex generator in going down that route of the heat lance sets as well so it's something to keep in uh, in mind you can also see this in the Alliance weapon reference uh, they get access to the full heat lance uh, here on paper, this is a super solid weapon. I mean, it's still one that is retaining very high support values. Um, if you look at the heat lance, for instance, even at uh, long range, you get above half of your uh, dice in support. So this has not been affected too much by the, uh, the slap on the wrist that uh, gun batteries have gotten. And with gunnery hazardous and very importantly devastating that is a big deal and you can almost add sustained to this as well because if you're going for the route of these heat lance and heat lance set weapons you are definitely going to want to take one of those solix generators to accompany them other weapons that are unique because you know broadsides and gun batteries you can find these in virtually every uh, orbat is the heavy magnetic bombard now looking at it um, for bombards, the lead values are not not major. I mean, if you're looking at the Imperium one, that starts with an 11 for the Augusta uh, heavy bombard. The Tyrannus naval mortar for the Crown had a nice juicy 12 there. Um, this is a bit on the lower end of the scale for those. However, they do get that nasty magnetic rule. And... Uh, as a quick reminder, if you receive a critical uh, damage from something with magnetic, you're going to get that. Uh, sorry, you're going to get that damage marker when you when you're damaged by it. And as a reminder, multiple critical damage markers lead to catastrophic damage, and that can stack to absolutely ludicrous levels of damage really, really quickly. So this low number might not be as much of a problem as you think it is because magnetic can be so strong and they don't just have this in a heavy version they also have this in a normal magnetic bombard version which shoots even lower values but it does seem to lead me to think that you can almost spam magnetic weapons and well, we all know that brings the pain from the uh, previous trident generator spam that the crown was able to do that thank god was nerfed other things that they have is things like heavy rolling broadsides with sustained 
which is great because that means that they are shooting reasonably well even on longer ranges so it's only three dice though that is bits on the low end of the scale but with sustained you're always getting that uh, big advantage but it means you can keep your opponent more at arm's length should you so desire and still shoot broadsides in a meaningful way rolling broadsides are very similar however i don't think they are very impressive because well you only have the point blank range anyway um, so getting the benefit from sustain from them over the traditional fusillade that you uh, associate with uh, with broadsides it's not that big of a deal is it i mean if it had been fusillade there could have worked just as well so it's uh yeah, it's a bit weird they also have the thermal cluster bombs, which is something that sounds really, really cool. With torrent, hazardous, and bombs, kind of reminds me of what we're saw or what we saw with the, the Chinese sky fortresses. A very similar uh, type of weapon loadout, and they can also do torpedo turrets, which are the very light torpedo attacks uh, and full torpedo salvos, as you'd expect with uh, with the rest one. They don't get heavy torpedo. Um, I thought. There were, no, you know, there were no heavy torpedo turrets um, in this army, so they can't mimic the crown in that way. Next up are the flagships, and they are interesting to say the least, especially this one. The Magenta Levant Battlecruiser. 250 points for a flagship means it's up there with the amount of uh, uh, points cost with some of the heavier hitters in, uh, in the game right now. Um, it's not a full battleship, however, it's just a, a battle cruiser, meaning the citadel and armor values are lower than you would expect, and more worrying than that are the hull values. I mean, there are heavy cruisers from other armies that have more hull points than these 250 point flagships, so I'm already straight off the bat with my theory crafting, looking at this, slightly worried uh, if I had to field one of these. Looks very brittle. However, when I then look at the whole slew of weapons on there, uh, my mood lightens somewhat. Uh, that's that's quite a lot of, uh, well, small gun batteries when we're looking at it. I mean, a lot of these smaller gun batteries, coupled with two full-sized heat lances, However, there's something to be said for these firing arcs as well. These heat lances, there's one of them, of the, the heavy ones, uh, aimed at the back, and that makes it slightly awkward. The Magenta class doesn't have any um, rules, uh, in terms of uh, special rules, for the, the heavy magazines though. So I think the build with this one is to go for the options you see here. This unit may replace any gun battery with a torpedo turret, wouldn't go that round to be honest, for free, or more importantly, that heat lance set for uh, 7 points. So all of those gun batteries can be replaced with heat lance sets, and for a very juicy minus 20 points, you can replace a single heat lance weapon, I think they've taken into account that the heat lance is already a very solid weapon, better really than a gun battery, which is why you get an even heftier reduction, to get a Solex generator in there. And if you're talking about something with three small heat lance sets and then the big heat lance all aiming towards the front, I think you can make an interesting ship out of this. Um, I do think, I mean, some quick maths means it comes down to 251 points, dropping it by 20 and then adding 3 times 7. That is on a very fragile platform. I mean, that's a cruiser-like amount of damage to blow away, and we all know Dystopian Wars is a very devastating game. Uh, I'd hate to see such an expensive ship just evaporate before the enemy firepower. It is a skimming unit, meaning you can, uh, that's it, the thing it has, you can hide it behind rocks and uh, scenery and everything, uh, while this can fly over it and first strike. But my Jove, you're going to have to be really careful with its placement, because that thing's going to go boom in no time. If you want to talk things that are not going to go boom, 
Here's the Mars Heavy battleship. Now, it's not French. I've marked it out instantly as being Italian. It's 265 points, so again, more top end for a battle cruiser, uh, sorry, for a battleship. But when you're looking at this, this is a heavy battleship. And its stats are quite in line with things like we've seen from the, the Congo heavy battleship and the Britannia. So it comes with the toughness you'd expect. It also comes with the gun batteries and looking at the gun batteries they are all nicely aimed straight forward so already liking the look of that with heavy magazines and reinforced waterline to protect yourself and the ability to have advanced repair facilities just one dice however but you know it's a nice little bonus it is going to repair itself quite decently as well with a heavy prow ram and a heavy broadside just a normal torpedo salvo, which is slightly less what you'd expect from a heavy battleship. But this one is completely thumbs up to me. Uh, for me. I mean, it doesn't have access to a turret that you could cheekily just swap out for a generator, mind you. And there's not one of them aimed at the back, but just having all three of them aimed to the front makes it a very easy to pilot ship. So, happy, happy, happy. The next one that we are taking a look at is again an Italian uh, ship. It's a weird thing in, in this Orbat as well, uh, I don't want to jump to too many conclusions yet, but I only saw Italian uh, Mass 3 flagships so far. There were no Italian cruisers present in the Orbat yet, so that's something that's probably being worked on, but yeah, something to keep in the back of your head, you can't play with Italian battleships just yet. Now, this is the Minerva Assault Carrier, and looking at the, the fluff piece, it is a combination of a mobile repair facility and a strike carrier. At 230 points, it is incredibly similarly costed to other uh, strike carrier ships. But an interesting one, it only comes with SRS Capacity 6, which is in the low end of the scale for what you'd expect from a strike carrier, but comes with that advanced repair facilities rule with a, a, a chunky three dice, so that's uh, that's definitely strong. And it only has two rocket batteries, but heavy magazines means you are t making the most out of that one. The thing that struck me most though about these rocket batteries is the gun placement. I mean, you can't fire both at the front, so that's weird. Uh, you can't fire both at the aft. You can only fire both at them to port and not the starboard. So this is going to be a very interesting ship to pilot, I can uh, I can tell you that much. Um, but for a strike cruiser, I mean, Armor 7 and uh, Citadel 12, you um, and 9 hull points in uh, Battle Ready Stage and 4 in Crippled, this is solid ship. I mean... And it's going to be finding itself on the front line with the advanced repair facilities, which is where you want it. Uh, and you also want to have it close to be launching those uh, SRS tokens, because the range on that isn't exactly spectacular. So, uh, yeah, it has the toughness to back it up as well. Also comes with that reinforced waterline, so that's very, very strong. Um, I think I like the Italian battleships so far better than the French one. Uh, the French ones, because this is the second French one. It's again not a battleship, because apparently that's not something that the French do. It's the Grand, the Oriflamme Grand Battlecruiser. Now, it comes in at a more reasonable 220 points, and it gets 6 and 4 hull points, so it's getting better, we're going up. It's at least not that 250 point behemoth with only uh, 9 hull points in grand total. But it's still armor 7 and 12, so again, more in line with heavy cruisers than full-fledged uh, battleships. Looking at the weapon loadout, though, it is a bit of a confusing one. Um, it has the heat lancet, the, the heat lance, which is the big one, uh, aimed forward. So, yep, that's great. But then looking at the rest of it, there's not a single heat lance set out there for the rest of them. I think you kind of want to go, I'm not sure if you want to go for that route, because this one actually has the heavy magazines rule. I mean, as weird as it sounds, you can replace, it, 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 I'm not sure I saw this, where you can replace that heat lance, 
in this one. Because this is the odd one out, is it? Isn't it? And it's not going to benefit from it when you can't support it with anything. Uh, you're going to have to use your heavy gun battery in support with your two... And this is the aft aimed one. With two gun batteries aimed to the front. They're not going to be able to support each other quite well. And then you have that heat lance <laughs> aimed to the front in the same way as the gun batteries. I, this one perplexes me. I mean, French design can be weird from time to time, but this this one baffles me. Um, I had I'd love I'd love to see an option to swap the heat lance and the heavy gun battery in this case. Then it would make a lot more sense. But yeah, they don't yet. And it says any model in the unit may replace a heavy gun battery with a heavy rocket battery. A heavy magnetic bombard, but again, that one's aiming to the back, so weird. Or a heat lance, the full proper one, for 8 points. Then you suddenly get a side firing profile, if you tickle for that option, with two heat lances that have to aim to one of the sides to support each other. And then you're still left with the two gun batteries aiming forward, and the two torpedo turrets, which I've not discussed yet, also aiming forwards. I mean, it is a very odd ship when it comes to its loadout. And, uh, yeah, I want to see what they do with it when it's actually released. And then the last flagship that uh, the Alliance has access to is uh, another French ship, the Saint Michel Levant assault carrier, which is, again, an SRS capacity uh, ship, as you'd expect. 240 points means it's in line with the cost for most other. Uh, uh, Orbat's ship, but again comes with that super low amount of hull points, uh, worryingly low, when compared to or coupled with their lowish amount of armor. Um, so you are getting a, a beefed up cruiser for battleship like points, um, and when you're looking at the SRS capacity as well, it's only SRS capacity 6, so that's not a lot to write home about. Um, it does come with all of the wills, uh, bells and whistles that you'd expect, and they're also getting launch catapults. Um, so you can launch your tokens within 25 inch as well. It is, however, another one of these skimming units, uh, so it can uh, hover above terrain and sort of launch daring attacks over rock formations. And I think this whole French faction as a whole will only come into its own if it has got some protection from terrain. Because if you're playing this out in the open seas without much uh, much to give them uh, an edge, I think this fleet is uh, doomed to fall flat on its face. Having said that, looking at the weapon loadouts, um, we don't see any heavy magazines in this case, uh, but they don't need it. It's a full heat lance armed ship. <laughs> but again, the fire arcs on these ones, these French ships, are odd. We've got a rear mounted heat lance with two front mounted uh, heat lance sets uh, to back it up, so you can't just you know, pull all of it together with a nice juicy support attack, which when we were looking at the dice uh, pulls you get from these weapons that we just saw earlier, that is their strength in a way. So it's again an odd one. Um, and you can, in this case, replace any of the heat lancets for a gun battery or a torpedo turret for free, should you so desire. Um, I'm wondering if that is needed. And then Again, you can change the heat lance weapon with a heavy gun battery, a heavy rocket battery, or a heavy magnetic bombard for free. But I don't like bombards being aimed at the aft. It uh, it just doesn't work that well. So, yeah. Again, odd ship, I think. Odd ship in design. Um, does come with agile, so that's pretty fun. It can turn around uh, during that... Uh, that drift three inch that it'll get from uh, from its mass three, but yeah, you know, again a bit of a, a weird ship from the French, let's say. And then just a small little uh, thing. This is the concept art that we find in the Orbat for. I think this is the Magenta Levant uh, heavy cruiser, and it is a very stylish ship. I mean, it looks absolutely gorgeous. I think. 
but you know, it has that weird weapon loadout that we've been seeing from the French so far, so you know, the, the rules need a bit of uh, clearing up to match this uh, grandiose uh, look. Next up are is the meat and potatoes of any uh, fleet, and that is all the different cruisers and mass one ships that they have access to. And like I said, I think I only saw French ships in here, so these are all very French sounding names. The first one is the Chasseur Levant. Now if my French, my middle school French doesn't abandon me, this is the Flying Hunter Strike Cruiser. Um, the Chasseur Levant has good weapon profiles though. A very attractive gun weapon profile. Front facing 270 degree arc uh, gun battery to the front with a heavy gun battery to back it up and then two small batteries, gun batteries, aimed to the side. That's how you want to see him. I mean, all things aimed in the same direction. It is one of those skimming units, so they fly. There are 120 points. The armor is what you'd expect for a cruiser of that uh, point cost. However, you do lose some hull points to compensate for the fact that you're, um, you know, having a a permanent skimmer unit. And if we're looking at those uh, those defense values, finally we see coordinated support kicking in as well. So if you keep these guys close to flagships and presumably you can take them into squadrons. Um, you can get a very nifty plus four submerged defense and plus four aerial defense as well. Meaning it does sound like it's going to be a, a nice and beefy little uh, little unit. I'm not sure if you can target skimming units with uh, torpedoes. I think you can. It's just aerial units that you can't. But I might be wrong on that. Actually, I should have checked beforehand. But here you go. If you're looking at the weapon loadouts, you can replace any gun battery with a torpedo turret for free, should you so desire, or a heat lancet for plus 7 points. And that heavy gun battery can be replaced with heavy rocket battery. That doesn't sound too appealing to me because you can't replace these with small rocket batteries. Uh, a heavy magnetic bombard, which can be interesting, or um, a heat lance for 8 points. So you can turn these into floating artillery pieces as well. I think that really could shine. However, if you're using them as a long-range artillery bombard, you're leaving them with a bunch of small gun batteries and those are only going to be shooting until closing range. So it's 128 points for a... Um, let's just say it can be an artillery piece that can hop over rocks. That's bound to be fun to play with. So I don't think it's a it's a bad option as well, and it can return quite a bit of firepower with those gun batteries if your opponent tries to close the gap. So yeah, that sounds like an uh, an interesting one at least. Next up is the Chevalier cruiser. Now Chevalier is a knight, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the uh, they are 110 points. And what do we get for that? Well, let's look at the stats first. Not super fast. Um, this isn't one of those skimming units, so it gets the full four hull points for a cruiser, which is what you'd expect. Has these two as well. Comes with the support. It, the air defense and submerged defense is not massive, but it comes with that coordinated support. So again, you want to keep them close to your uh, your flagships uh, to help you out. And uh, looking at the weapon loadouts themselves, this one is also fairly interesting and nothing weird going on with these weapons. I mean you're looking at a bunch of front-facing torpedo turrets and two front-facing heavy gun batteries. So their, uh, their normal cruisers are very much as you'd expect. Um, just two weird, just no torpedo salvos themselves but torpedo turrets so they can have a bit of extra flexibility in where they shoot at. And this could be interesting. You can replace those torpedo turrets with smaller heat lancets for seven extra points. This is per weapon, so you're going to be paying 14 points if you go for that route. And you can replace every gun battery with a heat lance for plus eight points if you want. That means that you can turn this thing into an absolute spam of those heat lance weapons 
which uh, which could be fun considering if you take that first build of that magenta ship uh, the one that was fairly fragile, but was able to get that solar one on there. Let's not forget, the solar generator has a 5-inch buff around it. That could work with a lot of these Chevalier-class uh, cruisers around it. So, I'm seeing that work if you buy them in tandem with one of those uh, flagships. Next up is the Ecuyer Light Cruiser. That's 95 points. Um, it's also French normal non-skimming unit, so it's what you would expect. These are your uh, reinforced waterline and vanguard cruisers. Um, for light cruisers, 95 points is still on the chunkier end of the scale, but you know, you sacrifice a whole points in your crippled state. But I don't think that is too bad. If a cruiser is crippled already, the firepower drops to such an extent that they're not really all that worth uh, not worth all that much anymore anyway, so yeah, that's not something to be too worried about, I think. They come with minesweepers, so that can be very handy if your opponent decided to just uh, plaster a bunch of mines in front of your uh, fleet uh, to start off with. And looking at the different weapon loadouts, you sacrifice one of the heavy gun batteries um, to have one little gun battery aimed towards the back and one heavy gun battery aimed towards the front backed up with two torpedo turrets again as well. With the same deal, you can swap out your torpedo turrets for heat lancets. I really hope that plastic kit comes with a lot of small little heat lancets because you can upgrade a lot of those things uh, in there. Um, and again, you can upgrade your heavy gun battery uh, aimed towards the front for uh, a heat lance as well. I wouldn't go and replace any of the normal... I don't think you can replace it, in fact. That small gun battery aimed towards the aft isn't replaceable, it seems. It's just a weird one. It just gets a bit stuck there as well. However, I think this ship is even more interesting as the long-range bombard option. Um, so I'm marking down the heat lancets, but this heavy magnetic bombard and just keeping your torpedo turrets looks to me like it could be the most interesting build of the lot. Um, and yeah, that little gun aimed towards the back, yeah, okay, just don't worry if you don't get to shoot that one. Just say that. I like the look of that one. Next up is the Epoyard artillery submarine and they're getting submarines as well they're getting tiny mass one submarines in fact um, and they come in at 30 points of pop so these are very comparable to um you know what you'd expect with the diogenes cruise uh, torpedo submarines and everything but they come with that small little magnetic bombard the one that i was talking about at the start of the video that can lead to absolutely bonkers situations with uh, magnetic just causing navigation lock after navigation lock and at only 30 points I could see this causing a lot of crying uh, online but we'll see what it does when it comes out also it comes with the spotter rule <laughs> so you're getting sustained on those tiny little 5-3 magnetic bombards that looks like an insane unit to me. Um, for as much as I've whined about the rules for the the, f uh, the skimming units so far, this one more than makes up for it. I'll I'll take your entire stock. Now, continuing on with all of this, we have a, a Grand Corvette, the Furieux Levant, the, the Flying Fury. I think this translates as and. Um, Again, comes with that coordinated support, so you want to keep these near your uh, flagships. It's 120 points for a you know, cruiser-type uh, type weapon. That is a lot, and when we're looking at it, you're not really getting a lot of hull points for it again, but you are getting that skimming unit. Now that means that there must be something special going on with these. These are also the escort duty ships, so they can uh, help out your uh, your big ship. Uh, that was already a bit on the fragile end of the scale. And when we're looking at the weapon loadouts, you get three 
small gun batteries. They're all forward facing, so that's great. You can uh, just uh, stack all of your firepower together if you so desire. And it has that weird thermo thermal cluster bomb aimed towards the back. Um, but with speed 8, you might be able to get to use it at some point. Um, it does use that uh, torrent template. Uh, but yeah, I could see that work. Especially because these have the agile rule. And with agile, it means you can uh, you can make turns during uh, your drift phase. Um, in the same way it could do during normal movement. But I think you're still sort of locked to that turn limit of 4. So you can almost do a, a 90 degree turn if you if you want with these. But you know, you might be able to use those thermal cluster bombs be be because of that. And they provide you with some additional mines of your own as well. All in all, for 120 points, I think this is decent. You can work with this, for sure. Um, you can also replace any of the gun batteries with torpedo turrets to turn it into a long-range torpedo spam monster, if you want to do that. You could also do it for your heat lancets, however, you don't get access to an easy solar weapon, so unless you want to send these instead, as, uh, as your uh, heat lancet spam weapons along with your flying cruiser it, it would definitely look cooler I think <laughs> but yeah I think the other one the traditional ship was slightly better suited for that role when it comes to their frigates they have very traditional ones uh, fast ones though at speed 12 but with armor 4 and citadel 9 it's slightly better uh, but they're fairly fragile. Again, a single uh, critical hit will uh, will see them flying off. Um, but yeah, nothing wrong with this for a for for a frigate uh, at 22 points. This isn't expensive at all, and you can add these. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's intended, but you get three of them, and it says these models do not benefit from the special rules in their age. They give you plus two to each other ADV and SDV and get this escort duty. So a unit of three of these going along with a flagship can lead to bonkers amounts of, uh, of additional defense. It's a maximum of plus four for the combined one. So it's not like you can just spam it up to plus eight if you, if you use uh, Oh, sorry, plus six if you use three of those. But that, along with the plus two for uh, for the coordinated support rule, looks solid to me. I mean, it's going to suck if you've brought a bunch of rocket batteries with you if you're facing uh, a fleet of uh, these guys escorting the French battleship, at least. And they come with the reinforced waterline, so they're quite well protected against torpedoes as well. So the Brits might not be that keen on facing the French using lots of these frigates at least. Next up is the Sirene attack uh, submarine. 70 points, so for a mass one ship that's 35 points a model. It's on the higher end of the scale, uh, but they come with a single heat lancet as uh, the weapon. That's probably why they're more expensive, because it's more than uh, than you'd expect with these. I suppose that's decent, but when we compare that 35 points, and you look at other, f uh, you know, 35 points costing Mass 1 ships, I mean, you're getting Sigimer destroyers for those. Um, you're getting enlightened... Um, frigates for them. They're out in, in a league of their own, of course, but, you know, these don't don't compare all that well to them. Let's just say that. So, not that much of a fan of the Sirene attack submarine, if I'm honest. Next up is the Victorieux Heavy Cruiser. 140 points, so that is also a heavy points cost. And it doesn't translate in lots of armor, lots of citadel, or lots of hull points. So, that's already a bit of a uh, a red flag, but they do come with ablative flank armor, meaning if they're being shot in the side of them, uh, you're going to get to the ablative armor rule, meaning minus one dice for every weapon in support if it's got the gunnery uh, quality. 
and it's got the reinforced water line so there is some extra protection added into these uh, as well. That means that they must be packing a lot of firepower and they do. Two heavy gun batteries to start off with. We are then continuing with a small gun battery slightly awkwardly aimed at the back but that does make for a very interesting side firing profile let's just be honest about that and then still getting two torpedo turrets to go with it as well and those torpedo turrets can again be replaced with heat lancets and those heavy gun batteries can be replaced with the full heat lances as well that could work uh, for the exact same reason um, but yeah I think with the sight I don't think I would want to upgrade any of these uh, of these weapons I'm just thinking with the rolling broadside that's the one with the sustained quality and uh, all those interesting heavy uh, yeah, gun batteries and normal heavy gun batteries the side firing profile seems to be the way to go with this uh, this ship as well just to get the ablative flank armor as well it's just slightly annoying that you can't stack both torpedo turrets in the same direction they can't both shoot at a single flank but hey, I can't, you, know, you can't have everything, I suppose. And then we have the Volière Levant support carrier. This is a carrier um, in a cruiser sized format. Again, with a slightly brittle three hull point. I mean, I get that you want your skimming units to be different and uh, noticeably different. I think 3-3 three, three is really yeah, punishing. They only get SRS capacity three as well, so that's not all that amazing. They do get two gun, small gun batteries as a compensation though, you don't find that on every single um, carrier. So they're sort of a hybrid between uh, traditional carrier and, uh, and assault weapon, uh, sort of a destroyer I suppose. They do come with launch catapults, so that means that you can actually sit back at that closing range a bit better uh, for your gun batteries, which is what they prefer. Um, so yeah. Interesting ship though, I mean, for 120 points you do lose one SRS token, compared, uh, SRS token compared to the rest, you do lose a few of those hull points, but you do gain the extra gun battery and the skimming uh, ability. Couple this with coordinated support and a fairly decent standard ADV and SDV, they might stand up for more punishment or two more punishment than you would expect. Um, it's an interesting choice at least, it's not one that I'm uh, burning down uh, straight from the get-go. And that was it, those were the French models. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this one, it's a bit of an odd one. Next up will be the uh, the one, the Orbat Deep Dive for the Sultanate as well, which, was all, which will also be a bit of a theory craft, but I hope you enjoyed it nevertheless, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!